last year, I'm pretty sure you remember, we had a startup challenge, startup ABSL challenge. It was a, such a success that ABSL decided to follow the concept. And we are looking for the best startups in Poland for a long period of time in seven Polish cities. We used to have semifinals to find the best seven startups. Uh, you will hear the history of the startups. And first of all, not the history is the most important idea, but the future they want to create. But at the beginning, I would like to invite to the stage Małgorzata Rokita, Marketing Director, Procter & Gamble Central Europe. Good afternoon. It's a privilege to be here. Uh, not easy to follow in the steps of Martin Gortat, but I promise you what's ahead of us will be very exciting. What we will hear in a few minutes is ideas from the startups that has already won the regional chapters of the ABSL Startup Challenge. The young companies that bring ideas, innovative thinking, make connections that already impress the jury there. And more importantly, ideas that address challenges and opportunities of modern business and modern society. You probably agree that innovation today is absolutely inseparable to the business, certainly to the successful business. In Procter & Gamble, we believe innovation is at the center of our work, at the center of the success when we make it. We innovate every day in every area of the business. We work on improving products that delight our consumers. We improve the product experience, product performance, packaging to make it easier, but equally, we innovate in how we talk to consumers in today's reality. We innovate how to bring the product through the supply chain more efficiently, faster, better, meeting everybody's needs uh, on the way. We innovate on our own internal work processes because that's how we can compete and outcompete the marketplace. Finally, we innovate in the ways how we want to build and grow our own organization, people in Procter & Gamble. And for that, in a huge part, we rely on our own innovation resources. We have 17 research and development centers all around the world uh, that work in, uh, on improvements and innovations every day. We rely on the specialized IT hubs that uh, innovate the process and bring the technology that can change the way we work and how we make the success. But we also see how huge value lies in building and creating innovations through partnerships at platforms like ABSL creates for us, where the experienced, uh, vast organizations like ours can meet young men and women who bring absolutely unconstrained view of the world, of possibilities, of how to address challenges, that think in a completely new ways. And very often we see that this marriage of few partners, of young and unconstrained, and of companies like ours with resources, with experience, with deep business understanding, coming together, create an energy that produces excellent results. And we are experiencing that such collaborations are beneficial for both sides. Both learn from each other and create opportunities for each other so that we move forward and we both win. We have been observing everywhere the vast richness of ideas that startups bring. In our own initiatives, like hackathon that we organize, hackathons that we organize, we collaborate with Wood Special Economic Zone in the Spark Startup Project. 
but equally in the ABSL startups. The companies that came and compete here are innovating in all of the areas of the business. We have seen great ways of solving problems from finance to HR, from data management to waste management, from education to healthcare. And that's incredible source of energy, ideas, and we will just see a good sample of some of the best. To end, I want to tell you that on top of the mine price that the jury consisting of members of ABSL and ABSL partners for that project will select today, also each of the partners, so Wood Special Economic Zone, Skańska and we, we will also award today one of the projects that has participated in the ABSL Startup Challenge that we value for the innovative thinking, for looking at problems in a completely new ways and uh, promising a very interesting business application. So with no further ado, I want to welcome you to the finals. Thank you. Thank you very much. Małgorzata Rokita Proctor and Gamble, our jury that was traveling around Poland in 70 cities, they chose seven best startups among more than 100 different ideas that are on minds of young people in Poland. And we have two types of, of prizes. The one will be decided by the jury here on the stage, and the second one the second one will be decided by the overall majority of all of our participants. So you, ladies and gentlemen, you may choose the winner. Just tap uh, ABSL Startup Challenge Audience Voting at ABSL application on your smartphone. And now I would like to, to invite to the stage our fantastic jury, seven jury members. Agnieszka Sigitowicz, Vice President, Management Board, Wódzka Specjalna Strefa Ekonomiczna. Marek Grodziński. Vice President of Thought Leadership Conference, ABSL. Barbara Piasek, CEO, Wolf Summit and the Sales Gate. Alejandro Paz Olivares, Central Europe IT Hub Leader, Procter and Gamble, Jury Leader. Jarosław Bator, Business Development Director, Skanska. Martin Sienczyk, Chief Technology Innovation Officer at Randstad. And Jacek Ratajczak, Plug Founder. This is our jury. Just want to remind you, you ladies and gentlemen, you may choose your public choice winner among our startup competition. And now this is the rule. Each startup will have three minutes to present its idea. Then members of the jury will have two minutes for a short conversation. And of course, the jury members will decide who will ask questions. So three minutes for a presentation two minutes for a conversation and just want to remind you ladies and gentlemen from our startups that after three minutes the mic will be cut off so it's good to avoid this situation it's not going to look good so three minutes for a presentation and we'll start right now the first one Virtubia Krakow Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to talk to you today, to talk about my passion. You know, I think that the greatest value in any company, the greatest asset, is in the people who work there. And as you may know better than me, it's very difficult to attract, to screen, to evaluate and pick those who will really do well in your company to onboard them and to train them. And as you may well know better than me, management is about decisions based on evidence. You need preferably numbers. But as you may well know better than me, HR was not yet disrupted that much. There's not much evidence that could be tracked down to numbers. And this is a problem. And Vertubio is 
tackling the problem. Well, we all know that pilots, investment bankers, and soft managers practice their skills in very sophisticated simulators. So why not other professions? Why do we still get our info, our intel on the people we are about to hire and train from dodgy and funny questionnaires where you declare how you feel, what you will do, what you would do if? Why don't we use simulations to see how they work? Well, this is something we do. This is a screen of a computer we all have. The Office Day, our product, uh, lets people work for a while. We measure their actions in stealth mode and then evaluate what they have done. We give you the evidence, we give you the numbers and let you decide. Now, why not? Why not tackle problems of sourcing, problems of training, onboarding and development with sophisticated simulations that take their practice from reality into something that gives you data, something that is fun, scalable, online and easy to use. So it's all up to you to decide if you're going to stay in the 20th century or join us in the 21st century of HR. So my challenge is level up your game with Vertubio and let's meet outside and have a chat later. Thank you. Okay, so what's your business model? We sell licenses to companies who then invite their uh, candidates in okay, so about license. four minutes. So it's a license, yes. A platform. And what about the competition? So uh, I believe you want to be uh, visible globally. So what kind of competition do you have right now? And how easy it is to uh, get to this market and create a competition if you don't have a direct one already? Yeah. Uh, the competition is traditional. It's psychologists who have their stamps to say they are right about the people. Yeah, but I mean the technology, right? Because you have a technology for that one. So I know a lot of platforms which are helping uh, right now uh, recruit developers. So I'm asking about technology itself. Well, uh, the technologies used now uh, are building upon methods developed from 1920 till 1986. So, yes, you might be using web-based ticking of questionnaires, but this is all 20th century. We're moving on to analyzing the professional domain, finding the manifestations that show what's correct to do in this professional, uh, in the job, and then measure exactly what, they be, what, what they're expected to do. So, not, not, no, not much competition, actually. How are you going to convince an HR director that this is a good tool? Do you have any references? Um, how, how do you want to convince an HR director that your tool is, uh, your product is good and if you have any references to, to prove this? Yes, ABSL members in Czech Republic and some in Poland are using us right now. We let the HR manager play. We let the first batch of candidates play. And then they see on their interviews and on the job if the methodology is right and the, if the people are right. Thank you very much. Virtubio. Track. That was our first candidate, and the second one from Katowice, Woody. Hello, everyone. Two weeks ago, I got a message from ABSL. I can have only one slide, and normally I have 20. So please, take a look at this one slide, which is worth 20. My name's Yevgeny, I'm founder of Woody, and we make customizable virtual reality headsets. Virtual reality is an amazing empathy machine. And today, everybody in the world can experience the life of other people with virtual reality and Woody. We all like to measure effectiveness. So check this. When uh, people want to uh, recruit, fine. Deep lifestyle impact is how our products and virtual reality is influencing people. So, 
the 20% is the number uh, in the impact that virtual reality gives. For example, we show video virtual reality experience uh, cutting trees and after this people start to consume 20% less paper than after watching normal video. Or British Navy increased recruitment rate by 60% after using 360 videos in their recruitment campaign. Well, um, this is the virtual reality. Uh, you can use it as, uh, as a power in marketing, in recruitment, in employee training. Uh, it gives inspiration to people. So in fact, VR experience helps people that are working for you to share the same goals, same values, and represent company in the best way. Well, uh, the interest towards 360 content increased by 700% during past year, which shows that there is definitely a chance for this. And well, um, Woody headset it weighs twice less than closest competitor. You can try it. Um, weighs twice less than, clo than closest competitor. At the same time, we are the only company that offers truly customizable headsets, the only product that offers smell, smell features. Like you're walking in virtual reality forest and feeling the smell of pines. Try it. Um, well, we are following sustainable goals, sustainable development goals, not only by creating global empathy. So I'm proud to announce that from today, Woody is going to plant a tree for each 10 products sold by us. Well, um, it's pretty easy to integrate us in your processes. Uh, in future, we want to be faster than light, actually. So today you ordered 1,000 branded headsets. Tomorrow, tomorrow, we already give them to delivery guys. And well, virtual reality will definitely lead humanity to a brighter future. But who will lead VR is a question. And we are going to work hard to make the answer clear. It's a pleasure for us to open the eyes of the world. And maybe we should do it together. Thank you. Yeah. Uh. Do you have already some clients? Sorry? Do you have already some clients or not? Yeah, we sold 150 headsets. This is a B2C model. B2C. Right. And what is your main business goal in the next five years? Uh, we want to enter the market, show that there is an uh, interest in uh, customizable virtual reality headsets and something really stylish in virtual reality. So we plan to capture up to 10% of virtual reality hardware market, which is $80 billion in size. In five years? Yes. Right. I, I understand you can cover it with different colors and brands. And yes, customization yeah. is possible in engraving, printing, anything. Other than being made from wood, is there anything that... Uh, is different from your competitors so that they can't copy it immediately? Well, the thing that nobody can copy is uh, our cheap labor force that produces our headsets, right? So it is wood, it's light, it's strong, and well, these are clear benefits of wood. It's eco-friendly. Do you but have if somebody else makes it from wood? Is there anything in terms of your own IP that you can retain? We are developing a software, something that is much more difficult to uh, copy, right? So there are opportunities to compete. Do you have an AIP right already? To Not your yet. Not yet, right. But you are... We are working on this, yes. And how does smell feature works, if you could tell me? Uh, it depends on what is your goal. When we sell it to P2C customers, we give different smells. We started from natural smells, smell of field, smell of... Uh, forest, but then we are going to develop. So you will put manually a smell inside the headset, a very nice cute ball. For example, smell of freshly bite Ferrari. So this is how it will work. So you have to change it manually, actually. Exactly. Commercially, is your pricing uh, similar to other competitors or is it cheaper? Or how, how does it work? We sell it for $14 B2C, but for APSL members, we are going to sell for $9. Thank you very much. Woody. Good job, Woody, from Katowice. Now, startup from Wuch, Take Task. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Marcin. It was me. I was taking the picture with you. Uh, did you ever thought that you can have 
data from 1,000 stores in one day, it is possible. Take Us is a platform where you have thousands of users, which we call agents, that do some task in their closest neighborhood. How does it work? A company, large, small, medium, is coming to us and ask us, for example, for the, the distribution of their products, wants to check the distribution of their products, wants to check the promo execution, shelf share, or the prices of competitors, or even sometimes mystery shopper studies. We create a survey inside Take Task and we send it to the crowd. An agent receives a push notification on his smartphone when he is in the closest neighborhood of the task. Once the task is done by him, he receives money. This money is sent via, via PayPal. In most cases, he receives uh, gratification the same day as the task was done. From the other side, companies receive data of high quality because firstly, an agent cannot send a task when he's more than 300 meters from the location, a high quality because we take photos of the shelf and we have image recognition. Uh, secondly, because it's cheaper, we don't have to pay for sales to sales representatives for kilometers because people are already there. And it is faster because we have thousands of consumers that uh, work for us. This is one part of the task which, which are done by uh, uh, agents. The other part is community, community tasks which are not paid for agents. And this year we created an event which is called There Was a Tree, where we collected 2,800 photos of uh, cut trees. This was connected with the uh, event, with the uh, law that enabled local municipalities to uh, cut the trees. In terms of figure, this is the task that are more frequently in take task. In terms of figures, we did already 50,000 tasks and um, uh, over uh, 19,000 downloads, applic 19, downloads of the application and about 30 clients which are coming back to us uh, on a regular basis. Uh, we are already accelerated by ScaleUp, by OrangeFab, and this year we had an uh, equity crowdfunding campaign where we gathered 100,000 euro for development. Thank you very much for your attention. The algorithm that you're using for image recognition, have you compared with other companies that do the same uh, work? Sorry, but it's very difficult to, see, to hear from, from the... Okay. You're using an algorithm for image recognition. Yeah. Have you compared with uh, other companies that are doing uh, the same? This is only a part of Take Us. Uh, in some categories, we are up to 90, 95%. It's like juices. But for instance, in cookies, it's, it's less. It's very difficult to, to have a photo recognition, uh, image recognition from the shell because the packaging is, is different. When the packaging is stable, we can go up to 90, 95%. And the rest is done by, manually by people. I have a question. How much time agent has to respond? And oh. what happens if he does not? Okay, so normally we gave two hours. Uh, an agent reserves a task and he has two hours to do the task in the, in the neighbor, uh, in, the, in the closest area. When it, he, 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 do, he doesn't do it, then the, another agent receives an information that the task is, is, he can reserve a task. So for example, in Warsaw we have 120 people and the task normally takes two or three hours and the task is done in Warsaw. We have some problems in small cities, but we are working on Facebook to recruit people in small, small cities. And how do you handle if the retailer doesn't want uh, a picture taken on the shelf? Uh, it happens. But uh, normally when you scan a product in the store, for example, because you know, want to know ingredients, you are scanning, you are doing the same job because you are coming with your smartphone and scanning your, the barcodes because you, don't, you want to have ingredients. So this, same, this is the same job. So normally we don't have problems with this. Thank you very much. I think the time is over. That was Take Task from Watch. Thank you. And now, Nibula from Poznan.
We all want to protect something. We want to feel secure at home. Companies wish to protect their property. But even if we install a camera system, it still only recalls the situation. So we have to get a better way and get notifications in real time so that we can react. So human surveillance is quite expensive and still does not guarantee that all events will be noticed. And human observer is volatile to fatigue, routine, or corruption. Well, we give you a solution. Uh, all you have to do is uh, install our box. It's a smart computing device that will convert video into a stream of metadata, uh, which is sent to a cloud computing server. Uh, each of the customer's personalized cloud computing server utilizes advanced data processing to notify you about an intrusion, camera sabotage, or an anomaly in uh, movement patterns that are learned throughout the day. Mm -hmm. If anything suspicious happens, you are getting a real-time notification through uh, an email or SMS. So we can benefit from this solution. Surveillance centers that wish to increase their effectiveness, companies that want to protect their property, housing estate developers that offer safe settlements, and also individual customers that want to protect their surroundings. Um, well, we offer the most advanced monitoring uh, service for everyone, and it's based on a classic model where with an installation fee and a monthly subscription. We are, we are currently finishing beta tests with individual customers, and we are ready to, uh, to scale and to cooperate with bigger customers. And if you want to check details, I just suggest check out nibula.com. Well, as you can see on the slide, all the characteristics are shown here. Well, our solution is respects your privacy. It's working constantly, learns, but what is most important, uh, keeping computing servers close to our developers, let us respond quickly to all new features that a customer would demand in the future. So hopefully in the future, all the capabilities of Nibula will be uh, anything you like it. Thank you. And, and one, on, on, on which stage of the business are you? Are you already selling your products? Are you uh, testing the market in Poland, in Europe, or wherever? Well, currently we are just, uh, we just have a couple of beta testers and we seek to cooperate with security agencies so that if you get a notification, you don't have to do anything and all, all alarms are handled for you so that it's more convenient. Well, the system is working, and uh, well, we just need to test it on a bigger scale so that we can see that, for example, a building with 50 or 100 cameras will still work. How, how accurate are the notifications? I mean, uh, what percentage of alarms triggered by the system are real uh, issues or real dangers or problems that occur? Some, what are the False. Could, could you repeat, please? Okay, so how well does the system recognize real uh, problems, real issues, dangers? Like, do you have percentage of this? Yeah, well, in general, uh, we can say that the system is certain in 95% of situations. Well, we did uh, research, we did uh, tests, and the results uh, are even published. <laughs> so you can check the effectiveness of the system. Your business model is uh, for both uh, companies as well as homeowners, right? Yes. Uh, how much does it cost for a homeowner to have this system? Um, well, because we are using uh, cloud computing, we can scale and we've increased number of cameras, the cost drops. So, for example, a uh, 50 cameras uh, may cost uh, about okay. 
Thank you very much. <laughs> But thank you. But I, don't, I just want to mention something. It really takes a lot of courage to stand here on this stage among so many influential, important people. When you see that 600 people are listening to you, looking at you, and you have only three minutes to present your idea you were working on for years. So really big round of applause for all our people on the stage. They are young, talented people. This is our future. They will take our job someday. And now, Emplosity from three cities. So three city, Gdańsk, Gdynia, Sopot for our friends from abroad. Emplosity. Just careful with your running if you don't want to ruin holidays. Okay, my name is Chris. Thank you, ABSL, for having us. I'm the co-founder of Emplosity. And the problem we are trying to solve is a problem that every company faces. If you were to go and ask the CEOs around the room what are the three most important problems for their organization, they would tell you that it's attracting, selecting, and retaining the best talent. Recently, there have been a discussion in the press and also at the conference today about the robots and automation taking over human jobs. So let me ask you a question. Do you think that automation will take your job at some point? Who thinks yes? Please raise your hand. Well, you're pretty cool about it. I wouldn't be so sure. But what we are sure about is that there are some activities at work where machines and computers are, are much faster and accurate than people. So what if software could help companies hire people like Amazon helps people uh, they dream of? What if we could bring simplicity to employment? Today, we bring Emplosity, the first AI-powered recruitment platform. And our mission is to empower recruiters with AI technology to replace the services provided by headhunters and recruitment agency. It's a huge market, more, of, more about one, million, one billion euro in Poland only. So we've launched last year, uh, and our mod business model is simple. It's commission-based, and you only pay per hire. And the main three problems we address are ineffective job ads, Uh, long hiring process and um, obsolete communication channels in terms of recruitment, of course. And uh, what differs us from competition is uh, that we make use of a cutting edge technology such as machine learning, intelligent automation, chatbot, and uh, data driven decision making, which are of a great benefits for the companies who use it. Why now? Millennials and Gen Z are reshaping work market. By 2020, they will make up to 60% of the workforce. In terms of communication, they require speed, ease, and convenience. And that applies to hiring process as well. And they also expect experience, like the Emplosity experience. In the end, I'd like to leave you with one thought. As you live here today, you go back to your office and you talk to your HR department You will know that today you heard about technology that will forever change the way how recruiters hire best talents because of the platform from Emplosity. Thank you very much. Hi. Hi. I have a question. Okay. Could you please explain? Sorry, I can't really hear you. Well, could you please ex explain once again how it works? Okay. So it's yeah. I know it might not. You might not get it from the presentation. It's it's kind of a online recruitment agency, and we got our software that selects and attracts people. We scan. We crunch a lot of data. It's it's gigabytes of data every day. So we monitor all internet. And we, uh, our proprietary algorithm, it selects and attracts people for, uh, for recruiters. So that's how it works. Is your AI in order to reach people or to decide who to, who, which people no, to no, hire? No, no, no. We use the, the, this, this, of course, this uh, decision making. We, we give the data, data for the recruiters to make the right decision. So it, at, the, at the end of the day, it's, it's about the recruiter who makes the final decision. How will you build scale? Because for yeah. a marketplace to work, you need sufficient enough of job offers and candidates. Yeah. So how will you achieve that? So uh, we, got, uh, our, we got 
we can get into details probably in the closed session, but we got our proprietary algorithm. We got uh, crawlers, we got uh, spiders who uh, scans all internet, all databases, our internal, external public databases, and we, uh, we screen them and uh, upon the uh, requirements from the recruiter, we just match. And then we contact the, uh, the, the employee and we, we attract and we tell them that the recruiter wants to hire them, direct. There's no job ads, we only put the invitation to the recruitment process. You, you call your solution uh, artificial intelligence. Yep. What is the arti artificial intelligence piece in it? What, what is the piece? Well, we use the machine learning, we, we got our own uh, algorithms and we, uh, we, we were based Good job, good job anyway. Good job. Dirty trick with this broken leg. I saw him this morning playing with Gordat basketball. Now, Scania from Warsaw. Three years ago, I was working for a market research company. One day, I was told that they have a team of 15 people. Their only task was to manually input the data from documents, 80,000 of them every month. I knew there must be a better way. The company could have used OCR technology to digitize raw text data, but document processing requires much more than this. To raise efficiency, OCR companies invented templates, and templates work well for identical documents. However, they require a lot of time to be defined, their correctness level is too low, and they are sensitive to layout changes and imperfections of scans. My name is Tadeusz Hruściel, I'm the founder of Scania, and we just took documents processing to the next level. Did we build a better OCR? We did much more than this. OCR works like ice for Scania. And Scania works like a brain of an intelligent system that understands documents and interprets their data quickly. The system is designed to draw less and less attention of its users and to eventually automate the process completely. We set ourselves three main goals. First, to multiply the processing speed. Second, to reduce, the human, de to reduce human dependency. And third, to make it an easy to integrate black box. We value our customers' resources. To save work in our senior companies, Scania simulates the way people read documents, so there is no need to prepare any templates. Scania learns from users' feedback, so every document process makes it better, more correct, and faster. The machine learning scripts optimize the algorithms to maximize future results. Scania does not bother its users about the data it is fully sure of. An average accountant can process 250 invoices per day. With Scania, she can process 350 per hour. Our current high score is 770, and by the end of this year, we'll reach 1,000 invoices per hour. Scania is optimized to process invoices. However, our experiences will allow us to process also CVs, deals, forms, and any kind of documents you would need. Scania is designed to be easily integrated into established processes in just two days. We are on the verge of revolution in documents processing. How would your business be affected by, the, by artificial intelligence? Will it thrive or will it disappear? How would your company's bottom line look like if just one employee could do what is done now by 10? I would love to find answers to these questions with you. You can contact me on this uh, email address or the phone or we can talk after the contest. Join Scania and automate what should be automated. Thank you for your attention, ladies and gentlemen. Perfect timing. So do you have any, uh, any percentage of um, issues, I mean, you know, in scanning the data so that it's not correct? Well, the percentage of uh, correct or incorrect data depends on of the database. So we, r we would rather talk about the uh, processing speed per hour because it makes you, it's more objective, uh, uh, objective metric. So uh, currently for PDFs, not scans, 
Uh, we have between 85 and 99 percent uh, of correctness, depending on the uh, on the data field. Uh, on scans, it got uh, a little bit worse. However, uh, with our algorithms and our user interface, we can uh, deliver the results we uh, I told you about in the pitch. Does it fit to any kind of uh, company? Because that's the business, it's your clients. And the second thing, are you already selling or is it tested? Uh, so I will start with the second question. Yeah. We already save uh, weeks of uh, work for uh, accounting firms in Warsaw and in Wrocław. Uh, we are talking with few archiving companies who has a lot of, jo uh, a lot of work with documents and uh, we think we can save months of work for them. Uh, and I'm sorry, I forgot this is the first question. Uh, don't, 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 don't worry, <laughs> it's okay. So, so do you have your first customer already? Yeah, yeah, we have more than 10 now. What is the pricing? Well, uh, for accounting firms, there is a software as a service platform. They pay from 35 to 20 groshes uh, per invoice, depending on how much they buy. Uh, for a bigger companies like BPOs or shared, shared service centers, we think more about the license per year. Per seat. What, what's the input process? So well, uh, you scan invoices or other documents in the future, then they are processed, there is a render of an invoice and the data, you check where... <laughs> hey, that was good. That was Kanye from Warsaw, and there is a last presentation ahead of us, Challenge Racket from Wrocław. Hello, conference. It's really a good place to be here right now. I mean, uh, the coffee is great and the presentation is also very good. Uh, actually, over the last two days here, I have heard a lot of fascinating debates about artificial intelligence, about how it's disrupting many industries that I couldn't agree more with. And I believe there's one more field brought here on this stage, but we overlooked it in general, that AI is going to change fundamentally forever, and this is recruitment. And tech recruitment in particular, because, because the process is largely broken right now. You may know that if you've been there, Tech candidates are incredibly hard to reach. Uh, they are typically employed with good jobs, not looking for new things to do, and therefore they are not accessible through job boards or LinkedIn anymore. Even bigger challenge is to properly assess a candidate during the screening process. This process is done manually, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of energy, and those are big global problems that are not going anywhere anytime soon. Our solution in three words only is to run a challenge. And we're allowing brands to run creative programming challenges directly on our platform and allow them to discover some hidden talents that are not accessible anywhere else. And it is working perfectly. It is working because this is the common trait of the most talented people that they love to get challenged, they're ambitious, they love to compete and uh, to have fun in the process and to learn in the process as well. Here's just an example of one of the challenges we're running. So as a developer, you may be given a task, the task might be write a logical game and you code directly in our uh, platform. The code is executed and it's automatically verifying when it, whether it's working right or not, simply by checking if it's making the right moves. As simple as that. So organizations are getting the process which is automated, unbiased and unified. And it is really, you know, kind of the fun battle game between different bots that developers are writing. But at the same time, recruiters are getting instant reports of who's doing good and who's doing incredibly well. Uh, that's already quite smart, I believe, but that's not the end of the story. In fact, the story gets really interesting here because we're applying artificial intelligence methods to observe how users are working, to observe how they are structured with their solution, how they are coming to the solution, what's their work style, what's their design style, to offer them some clues if necessary and some hints and to adjust the difficult level of the task this is really all to mimic the way of two humans talking to each other and to mimic natural interaction between human and the machine. And we're really just taking off, but our solution has attracted already some huge brands out there, which makes us look really op optimistically into the future. 
Uh, I believe we create a pretty powerful solution that allow brands to discover new talents, to nurture passive candidates in new ways not possible with any other channels. We're optimizing recruitment efficiency, but even more importantly, we're optimizing candidates' happiness. How are you handling uh, privacy and uh, info security? So, not sure if I got it right. The question was about the privacy issues. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, you know, here there are different policies. If you're starting in a challenge as a participant, you may freely apply to, be, to, to, to become part of the recruitment process, or different organizations may run their internal challenges, and there, there are some terms and conditions that everyone agrees to when participating in a challenge on our platform. And the business model? How do you charge? The, the business model. Uh, so, uh, uh, our uh, baseline business model is that we are allowing brands to access some hidden uh, talent pool and we can, we, can, we can run events for them and we can take care about our logistic issues and organizational issues and marketing and stuff or we can just allow them to use our platform as a tool to reach a community and to organize the challenge as good as they want, to, as they want it to have. What is the main goal for you? You would like to be the best, let's say, hackathon platform or you would like to be the best recruiting okay. platform for developers? Okay, good, good question. It might sound a bit like over-the-top answer, but our goal really is to revolutionize the way that IT recruitment works because right now I believe this process is highly broken. It is also not good for the candidates because they are struggling through a lot of uh, processes. We believe that it can be by large automated. We're the only company in the world scale right now actually at the moment that are using these artificial intelligence methods not only to give users tasks but to observe how they are dealing with the solutions. It creates, this is a huge game changer in my uh, uh, personal belief and we want to continue down this road and we want to make a big change in this space. How many people your customer hired, hired already? Our community is around 11,000 gigs right now and we have closed... Challenge Rocket. By the way, it was a very new definition of teamwork. Challenge Rocket. Thank you. I hate to be on the stage alone. I totally understand that. So these were seven startups chosen among more than 100 in seven Polish cities. Jury will have some more minutes to think it over. You ladies and gentlemen, because you may choose your public choice winner. You have some minutes to, to rethink everything because we have three more awards. Members of our jury had the right to select different winner, not only among these seven startups you have seen on the stage, but on the level of semi-finals, when they were traveling around Poland, if they found something really, really fascinating, they have a right to select their winner. And at the beginning, I would like to invite to the stage once again, Małgorzata Rokita, Marketing Director from Procter & Gamble, that will be first Statuette of Partner Recognition Awards. Thank you. So again, my privilege uh, to announce that uh, Procter & Gamble decided to give our award to a startup that neither presented today nor unfortunately is not present with us today, so will not be able uh, to receive at this stage the award, but I will make sure it reaches their hands. And that's a cognitum from Warsaw. A startup that connects a few highly advanced uh, deep learning technology and data mining technologies from semantics to data uh, to help in various industries and uh, organizations uh, both gather, interpret data and uh, provide solutions. And uh, for the company like ours that has a lot of data streams of unimaginative uh, amounts of data daily coming across the globe, we thought that's something that we want to look into and we are um, awarding them for that advanced thinking. Thank you. Thank you. Partner Recognition Award presented by Małgorzata Rokita. 
Thank you very much. And now, Partner Recognition Award presented by Skaska and Yaroslav Bato. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm honored to, uh, uh, to tell you all that, uh, first of all, it's a great pleasure to be in this jury and have <coughs> a privilege to see all of these startups because startups are the most important and the most important part of modern economy. As Skanska and as Business Link, a partner, a new partner of Skanska, I can say that <coughs> it's a great, it has, um, the creators is the modern world and the startups are creators. So uh, what I would like to uh, express is my respect to all the people who have a guts to come here and tell uh, what are the ideas. <coughs> so um, I will grab my mouth. I would like to tell you that our partner award will go to the company named <laughs> Take Task. That was a special award presented by Skanska, but take task is still in the game. You may say something. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm very surprised. Thank you for my people that I work with, uh, to Sebastian, because we work on take task for two years, and it was a lot of work that we did. And uh, thank you very much. Congratulations. One more special award presented by Specjalna Łódzka Specjalna Strefa Ekonomiczna and Marek Michalik. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. If I may, I would like firstly uh, thanks very much. Thank you very much for Marcin Gortat. I would like to say that uh, not only Marcin Gontad was born in Bauti, I was born in Bauti too. It is, it is still very silent, uh, silent district in uh, in Łódź, but very famous in very famous in Poland. Thank you uh, for your presence uh, in Łódź. You are uh, you are great and real. Uh, Ambassador of which uh, thank you very much for for it. Uh, secondly, if I may, I would like to thank organizers. Uh, it is a real great event in in Łódź. It is not only important for city of Łódź, but in my opinion, very important for uh, community of Łódź. Thank you very much uh, for organizers. And uh, in the end, I would like um, to congratulate, um, uh, congratulate uh, um, uh, prize winners. And I would like to tell you that uh, uh, I have received as a special economic zone a company startup BIN E. It is the winner. My pleasure. And this one too. Please. Thank you very much. Marek Michalik, Łódzka Specjalna Strefa Ekonomiczna i BIN i Laureat Nagrody Specjalne. Hello everyone. We were here last year telling you that we're gonna make our smart ways bin. Uh, now I can tell you that we did it. Uh, the big premiere was uh, on 
in Vienna two weeks ago. And now I can tell you that uh, the first bean is uh, going to appear on, on the market this uh, September. So I hope next year uh, I will be here and telling you that we have some customers on this, in this room. Thank you. Bean E. Ladies and gentlemen, just want to remind you that using our ABSL conference application, selecting ABSL Startup Challenge audience voting, you may choose your winner. But these are last 10 seconds you may vote. Last 10 seconds to vote. And I would like to ask to come here Marek Grodziński, Vice President of ABSL, because Marek Grodziński will present the award. Two, one. And in a moment, we should see the name of the company, but Marek Grodzinski will have the pressure to announce that. Oh, what a clear winner. And the, and the winner, and the winner is Scania. Scania, almost 40% of votes. This is the moment for a big round of applause. <laughs> Public choice, Kanye. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, who voted for us. A few months ago, I heard about the first edition of ABSL Startup Challenge, and I, would, I have dreamed about coming here, but I was not sure whether we will win. Thank you very much. It, was, it is so very important for, for us. Scania. And now, jury members, they will be voting. Ladies and gentlemen, just raise your hand. I will mention the name of a startup. You will raise your hand if you are in favor of this idea. Let's start with Virtubio. How many votes we have? Only once, only once, yeah. If we have three and three, for example, if we have an even or a deuce, we'll vote once again. We'll choose the winner among two startups with most votes. Virtubio, do we have a vote? One, one vote for Virtubio. Woody. One. Take task. One. <laughs> Hey, we have seven jury members, seven startups. It's going to be a long day. <laughs> democracy. People, democracy, exactly. We have nothing better than that, unfortunately. Nibulo. Ooh, we are going straight to find a winner. Emplosity. Scania. Two votes. Challenge Rocket. Okay, two votes. So now we're going to vote only for Scania and Challenge Rocket. Now, who's voting for Scania? Three. So it looks like we have a winner, right? Just to be sure. Challenge Rocket, do we have four votes? Yes, Challenge Rocket. Congratulations, gentlemen. Fantastic. You see, the, the teamwork yeah, is, is paying it. off. Yeah. OK. <laughs> now it feels really great to be here. Um, <laughs> I, I will have to take you away. I love these guys. Us. Incredible team. OK, that was a very sudden flow of excitement and emotions, so now I can begin properly. Um, it, fe it feels very good to receive this award. We're, we're really a software company, and I like, I like this saying that behind every code, there is a hero. And our real heroes right now today are the guys who are walking back in our office, and uh, they make us to do what we are doing. And this award should really go to them. So thank you a lot if you happen to watch this right now. And it, it was a great event overall. 
Uh, it was a great pleasure to participate in front of you. If any ideas that we have said resonate amongst you, uh, feel free to, to come to discuss if you agree with us. And if you don't agree with us, uh, come and discuss it, and it would be an even more interesting discussion. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Congratulations. Don't worry, I also have a friend like that. He's the man. Yeah. Oh, gentlemen, I would like to... I'm um, sorry, my mistake. I would like to ask you to get back to the stage because we would like to have a photo with all of the winners and all the winners. Please get back to the stage and we would like to have a beautiful photo with our jury members. I would like to... Małgorzata Tarokina to get back to the stage one more time. Please come to us with all of the prizes, checks, whatever beautiful you want to present. And all of the nominees, of course, all of the startups, please join us on the stage. I will repeat the names of our startups Virtubio, Woody, Take Task, Nibulo, Emplosity, Scania, and Challenge Rockets. Seven among more than 100 best startups found by ABSL in seven Polish cities. We have representatives of our startups and our fantastic jury members. Beautiful silence. Yeah. Big round of applause. Thank you very much.